The first step in making the knife is to get the handle materials ready. First I will carefully clean the G10 sheets. Then they are sandblasted to provide the best possible glue bond for lamination. They are then thoroughly cleaned again to remove any dust which would stop the glue from adhering properly. Epoxy resin is then carefully mixed and applied to the sheets with a roller. The sheets are then clamped together and left overnight to fully cure. After curing, one edge is ground flat on the bulk grinder. This straight edge allows the sheets to be cut into blanks using a wet diamond saw. The blanks are then loaded into a fixture so that mounting holes can be machined into the underside. The mounting holes are threaded, which allows the blanks to be bolted to another fixture so that the tops of the scales can be machined in a single operation. The blade steel and the handle blank are then loaded onto the fixture for CNC machining. The machining process then starts by drilling the holes for the handle pins. The CNC machine has a system for automatically changing the cutting tool. The weight reduction holes are now machined into the tang of the blade using an end mill. The second station in the fixture securely holds the blades so that the profile of the knife can be machined. The outline of the blade is machined to a very close tolerance to ensure it perfectly matches the handle scales. The third station holds the profile blade so that one side of the bevel can be cut. First a roughing pass. and then a finer finishing pass. Special attention is paid to the plunge line to make sure that it's absolutely perfect. The process of rough and finish milling is then repeated for the other side of the blade bevel. An engraving tool is then used to mark my logo on the blade. The blade is now done, and we'll change tools to move on to machining the handle scales. First, the pin holes and lanyard holes are drilled. Then the outline of the handle scales is roughed out. I love seeing that rooster tail of G10 chips.
The contours of the handle scaled are then 3D machined using a ball nose and mill. This process allows me to get exactly the handle shape that I want every time. The bottoms of the handle scales are then lapped perfectly flat. And the blade is hand sanded to 220 grit, ready for heat treatment. The hand sanding process is quite lengthy, but it's necessary to get the quality of finish that I want. The blade is now ready for heat treatment. The blades are heat treated by a local company using my heat treatment protocol. Here you can see Kian, their shop manager, showing off their amazing vacuum furnaces. Heat treating in these vacuum furnaces allows me to get much more consistent results than I'm able to in my small shop with my little furnace. Each blade is then individually checked after heat treatment. The hardness of this blade comes out at 63 Rockwell, which is perfect. The blades are then put in the vibratory tumbler to put a tiny radius on all the sharp corners. The serial number is then engraved onto the blade using a diamond drag engraving tool. The blades are then blasted with a 50-50 mix of aluminum oxide and glass beads. This produces a silky smooth matte finish that provides an excellent base for DLC coating. The DLC coating is done by another local company that I work closely with. These coating machines are worth upwards of $500,000 each. The DLC coating is applied inside the specially designed vacuum chambers. The glow that you can see is created by the plasma that the process requires to work. The DLC coating is incredibly durable. It's actually harder than the blade steel is. The blade and handle scales are then assembled using stainless steel Corby bolts and a permanent thread locking compound. The handle scales and tang are both so perfectly flat that the joint will be watertight even without glue. The heads of the bolts are then ground flush to the handle scales using a 120 grit belt on the belt grinder. The blade is then sharpened using my specially designed sharpening system. The edge is first roughed in using a wheel that is electroplated with 800 grit CBN abrasive. This abrasive cuts very cold because it is very thermally conductive and lasts a very long time because it's nearly as hard as diamond. The edge is then refined by stropping it on a wooden wheel that's loaded with 1000 grit cubic boron nitride compound.
This results in an edge that is terrifyingly sharp. The knife is then carefully cleaned and inspected. Next it's time to make the sheath. First we heat up the Kydex, a special type of thermoformable plastic. After it's heated to around 300 degrees Fahrenheit, it is soft and ready to be formed. The Kydex is then pressed onto the mold using this special custom made pneumatic press. After being allowed to cool, the Kydex retains the shape of the sheath mold. The knife making fixture is then removed from the CNC and replaced with a fixture for the sheaths. Reusable double sided tape is used to hold the kydex onto the fixture. My sheath cutting program is then loaded into the CNC. First, the grip notches are machined into what will become the thumb ramp of the sheath. Then the holes for all the rivets are bored. Then we cut out the outlines of the sheath halves and the belt loop plate. Kydex cuts amazingly well on the CNC with a sharp end mill and a high pressure air blast. The parts are then removed from the fixture, leaving the tape which can be used for the next sheet. The sheath halves are then riveted together permanently. Then a belt loop is assembled from high strength nylon webbing and the belt loop plate. The belt loop and sheath are then fastened together using Chicago screws. It's a perfect fit.